Hi, I'm Paul Yarrow at Point Blank Online. I currently work as a producer and songwriter for Books Music. I'm the creator of the Control Skin for Logic Pro, and I run a website, logiccafe.com, for Logic Pro users. If you enjoy this tutorial, there's plenty more content like this at pointblankonline.net. You're watching Logic Tutorials. In this second tutorial in the series on making a dubstep style wobble controller for the ES2, we'll be looking at actually building the controller in the environment and exploring the elements involved with building a custom interface from scratch. To make the wobble controller, you will need to set up the environment as a workspace. In order to do this, navigate to a screen set you're not using and open two environment windows. Arrange the environment windows so that one is above the other. This will enable you to have dual environment view and enable easy cabling access between the windows. In the top window, navigate to the mixer layer. In the bottom window, click on the parameters box and navigate to create. Rename the new layer. I'm going to call it LFO Control. In the top window, go to new and select monitor. Cable the channel with the ES2 loaded in, into the monitor. This is your insight into what messages are being sent when you make any changes on the ES2. And as you can see, as I move faders, the monitor is showing exactly the information we need to copy into our controller. So now we can begin building the controller itself. The two main components we will need are the bang second fader and a transformer. Go to New, Fader, Specials, Bang second fader. You can resize the fader to whatever you like. I normally like to make them look a little like the MPC-1000 pads. And then do the same for the new transformer. So next create a monitor and cable the fader into the transformer and then the transformer into the monitor. You can see if we hit the fader that unlike most faders the button does not require two presses for on and off. It resets itself on every hit. You can also see the resulting messages in the monitor. This message shows the type of message which in this case is a meta represented by the M, the channel which is 1, the data byte 1 which is 99 and data byte 2 which is 0. Our objective is to control the LFO modulation increments using the faders. So in order to do this we need to read the values from the ES2 and apply them to our fader. The first button we create is going to be one whole bar, so the modulation cycle is one pre revolution per bar. So I'm going to select the fader and rename it 1 over 1. And the transformer 1 over 1 transformer. To get the reading we need to move the LFO2 fader until the display shows one whole fraction. Now you can see in the top monitor that it reads fader 2 94 28. Now we need to program the transformer to convert the signal being sent from the bang second fader into the message from the top monitor. To do this, double click on the transformer object and in the resulting window you'll see two rows of conditions. The top row represents what the bang second fader is sending. As the bang fader is at the end of the chain, we can leave all of this top row set to all because no other signals are going to pass through. The bottom row is what we want to transform the signal into, so this is the row that needs to match the data in the monitor. So to do this, on the bottom row, click status and change the value from through to fix. You'll see a second row pull down menus has appeared. Click on the menu and select fader. We can see from this top monitor that the next value is 2, so again click on the box which says through and in the resulting menu change that value to 2. Same again for data byte 1 and change the value to 94. And finally for data byte 2, ch change the value to 28. If I now hit the fader, you can see that the monitor reads the program value. It's these final values in data byte 2 which will determine the LFO increment we are selecting in the rest of our faders. 
So now it's a good idea to test if this works. To do this, the controller needs to be plugged directly into the sequencer input, so Logic Pro hears what it says. Change the top environment window to click on ports, and you should see this window with a piano keyboard, monitor and sequencer input. What we do to get this working is drag a cable from the monitor in the controller environment we created into the sequencer input. Navigate back to the mixer environment and you'll see the controller button we've created should control the ES2 increments. And if I change the value whilst playing a note, we can hear the button we've created is working. It's these final values in data byte 2 which will determine the LFO increment we are selecting in the rest of our faders. Because of this, we can simply highlight the fader and transformer, copy them and paste them back into the window. Now for this second fader, all we need to do is select the next value we want, in which I'm going to select the whole, tr whole note triplet increment. Take the reading from the top monitor, which is F2, 94, 30. Click on the newly copied transformer and change the data by 2 to 30. Now before I forget, I'm going to rename the fader 1 over 1T and the transformer 1 to 1 trans. We can now test both buttons are working as they should. Repeat these steps until you've got all your faders created and programmed into the increments you desire. Here's a list of the ones I've used. To have the controller as a floating window on the Arrange page, make sure that the pads you've created are positioned to the top left hand side of the Environment window. Navigate to your main Arrangement page and select Window Environment. If you can't see the LFO Control Environment, select it from the menu. From that window, go to View. Hide cables and protect the positions. Then select Frameless Floating Window. Resize it from the bottom right hand corner. So there you go, one wobble controller. Once you get the hang of this method, you'll be able to use this kind of control to control anything you like in Logic Pro. So it's great to experiment and create your own custom interfaces. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. 
We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach it online. And the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.